Reactions at the carbonyl carbon represent a large class of reactions tested on the MCAT. You'll know the mechanism down pat after watching this video. Now, anytime you see a nucleophile and a carbonyl carbon, be it a ketone, aldehyde, carboxylic acid, whatever, you should think nucleophilic attack. Let's do it. So here we have an aldehyde, a ketone, a carboxylic acid, and an acetyl chloride. All of these share something in common, and that is the carbonyl group. What is unique about this group is given oxygen's electronegativity, it creates a dipole where the carbon becomes partially positive. It becomes an electrophile. What this does is it opens up the carbon to attack by a nucleophile, and that is the basis of how all the reactions in this video will proceed. So there are two different groups, nucleophilic addition and nucleophilic acetyl substitution. The functional groups that undergo addition are aldehydes and ketones. In this example, I have acetone, and the thoxide is the nucleophile. So what happens is the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, forcing the double bond to push its electrons up on the oxygen a tetrahedral intermediate is formed, and that's a hallmark of this reaction mechanism. A tetrahedral intermediate is always formed. In the next step, the intermediate is protonated, giving us the final product, which now has a hydroxyl group in place of the carbonyl. So that's it, a pretty simple mechanism, and it's exactly the same for aldehydes as well. Again, the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon to form a tetrahedral intermediate, which is then protonated to form an alcohol. Note that aldehydes will always form primary alcohols, while ketones will form secondary. And that's really the only difference between the reactions. Now, if you look at the reaction arrows, you can see that the first step is not reversible, but this isn't always the case. It's not reversible here because ethoxide is a strong base, which means it is rather unstable on its own. If a weak base were used as the nucleophile, then step one would be reversible, as weak bases are stable and fine hanging out on their own. The second step of nucleophilic addition, however, is always reversible. Now, a specific reaction among this class that you should know for the MCAT is the Grignard reaction, which I actually had the chance to do in lab, and everybody got horrible yields. So, MGBR attached to an alkane is the Grignard reagent. The magnesium bromide group is positively charged, and this effectively creates a carb anion which acts as a nucleophile. Now, guess how this mechanism works? That's right, nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl carbon, forming a tetrahedral intermediate. Now, the action of the magnesium bromide as a salt with the negatively charged oxygen isn't really important for you to know for the MCAT. The nitty-gritty stuff rarely is, but I'm putting it here just for show. Anyway, the second step involves protonation of the tetrahedral intermediate to form a tertiary alcohol. If we had started with an aldehyde, we would have gotten a secondary alcohol. Note how this is different from the regular aldehyde or ketone reactions, which formed primary and secondary alcohols respectively. The Grignard forms a carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond, which is, pretty, which is a pretty rare occurrence. Uh, another reaction that does do this, though, is the aldol condensation, which is another specific one to know for the MCAT. So before we get to the mechanism, which I'm guessing you might have an idea what it is, first we must discuss another feature of carbonyls, which is that in addition to creating a partially positive carbonyl carbon, they also have relatively acidic alpha hydrogens, that is, hydrogens one carbon adjacent to the carbonyl group. They have pKa's of 16 to 20, uh, depending on some factors which are out of scope for this video. And to put that in perspective, water has a pKa of 15, so these things are relatively acidic. Because of this acidity at the alpha hydrogen, something called ketoenol tautomerization can result, which you see here. The structures differ only locations of a double bond and hydrogen. Now, the equilibrium lies very far to the ketone side, but the enol form does exist, and in this reaction, a base deprotonates it. We often see this reaction with a 2 before an aldehyde, but this 2 really means one aldehyde plus one enol reacting as I have here. So the aldol condensation proceeds by nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl forming a tetrahedral, you get the picture. 
Now there are actually three intermediates in this that I have omitted. Basically it's just acids and bases moving protons around to give what you see here. Again, that sort of nitty gritty stuff may be necessary for your course, but it isn't for the MCAT. Once you get to this final intermediate, it is indeed protonated, forming this aldol addition product. And the reaction can stop here. However, in the presence of a strong base and heat, it can be dehydrated to form this final product, which is the condensation step. Uh, this leaves us with an alpha-beta unsaturated aldehyde. And that's aldol condensation. Definitely know this specific one for the MCAT. Now, I know drawing the nice cleaned up final product from the dirty intermediate version can be a little tricky, so here's what I do. Uh, this can be a nice shortcut on the test if you do indeed get a condensation question. So, start with the given aldehyde. Convert it into an alcohol. Then, draw the same given aldehyde to the right of that. Now, attach the two together at the alpha carbon of the aldehyde and the hydrogen of the alcohol eliminating the hydrogen from your drawing, not in actuality, in the process. That should give you the nice and clean final product. You can see I just had to change the direction of one of the carbons. Um, anyway, that's nucleophilic addition, so let's move on now to nucleophilic acyl substitution, which happens for carboxylic acids and its derivatives, like esters, anhydrides, amides, etc. So the nucleophile attacks at the carbonyl carbon, forming a tetrahedral, tetrahedral intermediate. Are you sick of this yet? Well, the second step is actually different with substitution. Instead of the tetrahedral intermediate being protonated, the electrons come back down, reforming the double bond to oxygen and kick, kicking off the original carboxyl group, creating, in this case, an ester as the final product. So this is substitution because, A, the carbonyl group remains unchanged, like unlike an addition where it becomes a hydroxyl group, and B, the nucleophile replaced a leaving group, and this is the main distinction. A leaving group got kicked off. Aldehydes and ketones don't have great leaving groups, that's why they undergo addition, not substitution. Here's another example, this one is transesterification, which is acid catalyzed, again, don't worry about the nitty gritty, proton moving so much. You can see it proceeds by the same mechanism. So, transesterification is converting one ester into a different one. And if you do want a different one, you just react it with an alcohol. Now, you will notice that both steps are reversible, which means that the attacking nucleophile can be kicked off. This follows straight from SN2. If the attacking nucleophile is stronger than the leaving group, then the new product will be in the majority. If it's weaker, then the original product will be in the majority. So knowing that, how do we ensure that we get the new desired ester? Well, if you refer back to your Gen Chem, you just use Le Chatelier's principle. Just use a crazy excess of the alcohol and you'll get your desired product as the major one. The Claisen condensation is up next and is another specific reaction you should know for the MCAT. It proceeds in exactly the same fashion as the aldol, only with esters instead of aldehydes. And obviously it's a substitution, not an addition. So one last time with the mechanism, which is base catalyzed. The free pair of electrons on the enolate anion come down, reforming the double bond to oxygen and causing the enolate to attack the carbonyl, forcing the electrons of the ester up onto the oxygen and creating a tetrahedral intermediate. Then, these electrons come back down, kicking off the carboxyl group, uh, in this case ethoxide. The final product is a beta keto ester, and the ethoxide gets protonated to form an alcohol, ethanol. Uh, do note that there, this is the final product. There is no dehydration for this reaction, like there was for the aldol condensation, um, as there is no hydroxyl group on, in the claisen to uh, kick off. Finally, we end with acetal and ketal formation, which combine both addition and substitution to produce the products you see here. Acetals are made from aldehydes, A and A, ketals from ketones, K and K, but are otherwise the same. Uh, if you react either with one equivalent of alcohol, you will get what is called a hemiketal and hemiacetal. 
This step is the addition step, as you can see. Reacting the hemis with the e another equivalent of the same alcohol will result in a substitution, kicking off the original oxygen and forming the respective ketal and acetal. Now, if you get a question on these, pay close attention to see if there are words like excess. Whenever you see that, it should trigger a light in your head that says, oh, this reaction is going all the way. It's going to happen twice. <clears throat> this applies to other orgo reactions as well. The Grignard, for instance, can add twice. So excess is a good keyword to watch out for. And that's it for nucleophilic attack. Here are a few questions. Pause the video while you work on them, as the answer slide will appear in about five seconds, so pause it now. And here are the answers. Pause again if you'd like more time to review. And if you have any questions or comments about anything in this video or about the questions, feel free to post and I'll get back to you. So, nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl carbon forming a tetrahedral intermediate was the name of the game in this video. Hopefully that mechanism is drilled into your head by now and hopefully it results in some points on the test. Remember, organic on the MCAT is more about remembering classes of reactions. Sure, there are some sp specific ones you need to remember, like the aldol and clasin condensations, but even these show the same basic mechanisms with the rest of the class, so make sure you're confident in this.